Now we've talked about some of the key similarities across the region, um, and we've also touched base on some of the, the differences. But just to sum up, what would be the key differences between Vietnam, Vietnamese youth, and the Asian youth that would set Vietnamese market apart from other Asian markets? I, I would say initially, uh, Vietnamese youth do not have a benchmark. They do not have a comparison in terms of what's it like to be a teenager in modern Vietnam. Mm. Uh, again, Martin mentioned it, like, you know, uh, I had reference to my siblings and their siblings and, and friends and whatever else. So mm. Vietnam today, it's the first generation of teens. So they're experiencing on their own for the first time. Mm. You know, yes, they can take references from Thailand and whatever, but mm. no, they want their own references. So I'd say that the biggest fundamental difference is this is the first batch of teenagers growing up in a modern world mm -hmm. with the internet, with MTV, with this, with that, with generation gaps to contend with. So I believe uh, for marketers, by really understanding what their aspirations are, by really understanding the balance between traditional and modern, um, there is huge impact mm -hmm. you can have by creating teen trends mm -hmm. for them, mm -hmm. you know. While in many other markets, uh, they've always had those reference points of which to gauge their own, own self-expression and lifestyle and whatever else. So mm. for me, I think that's the single solitary biggest difference mm. between Vietnam and other Asian youth. Yeah, there's, there's, no, I think that the, the opportunity for brands to still uh, sort of lead cultural or establish cultural leadership mm. uh, among among I won't say pop popular cultural leadership is is quite big in Vietnam. There is not uh, a whole lot of references to to follow, and and uh, so brands are going to play that role uh, together with the entertainment industry, of course. But uh, but brands will have a, a, a pivotal role in that respect. Mm. Uh, just just all that uh, in terms of brands, um, you know. When you look at social websites, uh, I think the global average, the average uh, global uh, uh, social network user has something like 180 friends, is it, or whatever else. In Vietnam, they have less. It's about 86 friends. But Vietnam is amongst the top in terms of having brands as friends. Brands as friends. Brands as friends, like mm. joining brand chat rooms, things like that. So the brands, uh, internet users or youth can actually be ambassadors vis-a-vis -vis the internet as champions of brands. And it just shows you that branding in Vietnam is still relatively new and quite exciting, mm -hmm. you know, and people actually go online to find out about the brand. Mm -hmm. And where are the promotions? Where, wh what are the specials? Uh, what's the history of it? And it shows you that there's still a lack of entertainment in a way in Vietnam because, you know, money is limited. Mm -hmm. So people actually scout this out. I, for me, I would never in, in a million years have checked out a brand when I was a teen, to be honest with you, but I grew up in a very different generation. Yeah, so so Martin, um, do you actually run regional campaigns um, that includes Vietnam, or do you run very separate campaigns for Vietnam? Uh, both. Uh, we, have, we run our, our, our advertising in particular. It's a mix of local so developments that are exclusive for Vietnam, as well as uh, reapplication of original or even global campaigns. Why is there a mix of regional and local? Depends on the message that we want to deliver. Some of the messages are very uh, need to be localized more than more than others. Some of the the expressions may be more relevant. For example, if delivered by a Vietnamese face or an Asian face than mm. a Western face. So so we we tend to to localize it also in in, in that way. But but the, the, the core of our brands, is, the, the core of our, of, our, of our brands, particularly our global brands, Coke, Fanta, Sprite, and so forth, are remains the same ac across the globe. So the messages, the, the 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 essence of what we say to to consumers around the world is is very similar. So that's why there are some some things that we can reapply. Mm -hmm. However, how we say it. Uh, the tone and the manner and the and the and the, and the faces that we use to say it are are, are uh, 
sometimes more applicable uh, to if they are local. So it's a, it's a mixture. It's, it's really casuistic. It's not, there is not a policy or a strategy necessarily to say, oh, we have to use this, or oh, we have to use that. It's more about what is the best way of you, uh, that to deliver this particular message. You see the same trend with other brands? Uh, uh, absolutely. I, I mean, in the old days, people would just take some bloody ad from Thailand or whatever else, stick it on TV, and then wonder why it didn't work. Okay? But I think Martin has nailed it on the head. Very often, it's what you're trying to say, you know, what the actual message is that will dictate, uh, whether it's local, so on and so forth. Um, I would just simply say it's important to have both because, you know, Coca-Cola spends, I don't know, X number of million dollars uh, on Super Bowl advertisement. Well, you're not going to just throw that out the door uh, if it has relevance to this market, right? Um, but as, I, I, as Lynn knows, I always tell my staff, it's not necessarily what you say, but it's how you say it. And I think that's where the application is very important to, uh, how shall I say, to ensure that the message you're trying to sell is relevant in terms of context to Vietnamese, and that's very important. Mm. I recall seeing um, the Fun Factory campaign run by Coca-Cola. Um, it's a global campaign, isn't it? Yes. How, how does it impact the Vietnamese youth? Oh, we got very good reception to, to, the, to the campaign. Uh, we, we run a series of collectible cans, and we have, so a lot of people actually collecting the cans, which was mm. uh, an interesting development. Um, uh, so it, it, it resonated quite well. The truth is, because because of the nature of the of, of, of that particular uh, campaign, we had to work harder at explaining what we meant than mm. than in other places. So so we got a lot of questions or question marks coming from mm. from consumers, and we had to go back and explain what what the happiness factory meant mm. and and what we were trying to say. But at the end of the day, it was also a very successful campaign. Have we also seen any locally adapted products just for Vietnam? Um, I'll put it this way, I think uh, 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 one of the best examples of that is uh, uh, shampoo by Unilever. Okay? Uh, it was called Sun Silk. Everybody knows Sun Silk. But they came out with something called Sun Silk with Bouquet. Bouquet is a Vietnamese root which actually helps blacken and sheen the hair. And that just, when they put that out, that just, it just blew, mm. blew the market apart because it was international quality, but with local ingredients, mm. you know? Yeah, just add on to that. I mean, like, particularly in terms of the taste and everything, it's really, for Vietnamese people, they're really mm. particular about the taste. And also, mm. like, they need some kind of familiar points of, I mean, right. preference. Right. Yeah. I mean, for example, one, another example to add into this might be KFC. So it's not like when they come into Vietnam, it's not like they I mean, the menu is not exactly like what they offer in other countries. Do you have any locally adapted products for Vietnam? We have a uh, Sarsi flavor soft drinks. We have uh, lo launched the Minun Mei Nutribus, which is a milk uh, juice combination, which was designed for Vietnam. We just recently launched a, a, a tea uh, brand tea. called uh, Real Leaf, which is a mix of mm. re green tea. Uh, leaves and chrysanthemum. Um, mm. Specifically so for specifically Vietnam. Specifically for Vietnam. Nowhere else in the world does this product exist. So yeah, there's a lot of a number of the developments that we have done which are exclusively for for Vietnam. And again, it is very much about having that reference. But then it's also about the innovation. But the innovation is about Lu. So you can take something like tea or sarsi or whatever else, but then you're coming up with a whole new product. Mm. Yeah. And that's uh, something that uh, uh, I think Vietnamese, especially Vietnamese youth, because they've grown up with nothing but change. Yeah. So it's just part of the lifestyle. Yeah. And so it's, new every day. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm worried in 20 years when we, when we run out of ideas. You know. <laughs> Before we end the show today, um, let me ask one more, one last question to all the panelists. Um, considering the similarities and differences that we've discussed about. Um, in values, lifestyle, behaviors, um, in between the Vietnamese youth and the youth segment in Asia. What do you consider a good market entry model for Vietnam? It really depends on your aspirations, but I think that, um, that you have to start with uh, 
good local insights, not only for marketing reasons, but also for business reasons. Uh, the, the, the navigating Asia for non-Asians and navigating Vietnam for non-Vietnamese is not an easy task. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I would say, first and foremost, find, find a way to get local, local, uh, rel local relevant knowledge. And that, I think that's true everywhere, mm -hmm. but, uh, but it is definitely true here. Um, the second is don't ignore the uh, don't ignore the realities, the geographic and demographic realities of Vietnam. Mm -hmm. uh, Vietnam is a highly rural market. Mm -hmm. um, so despite all we've spoken today about, it is very traditional in that, in that sense. Uh, the way that people sustain themselves is mostly, or is largely driven by agriculture, uh, by uh, decentralized manufacturing by um, so th th that reality has a huge impact, particularly for for FMCG businesses, but but also for for other types of businesses. You see, all all, all uh, taking to, taking into consideration is not only about Ho Chi Minh City in Hanoi. Uh, it is about a much bigger reality. Um, and the third p thing is you have to be very patient. You have to be very patient. Yeah. Vietnam is not for the meek of heart or for the short of uh, patience because there will be ups and downs and uh, uh, so in that sense you have the, whatever business model you, you run it has to be resilient resilient uh, over the long term and you have to be willing to put up with a lot of changes along the way and a lot of uh, again ups and ups and downs um, uh, in many ways but but I guess the only thing I would say is start with a good uh, start with good local knowledge. You must be a very resilient person then. I am. <laughs> <laughs> I think what's really important to understand is do not place your expectations on them. Mm. You are in a different country, things work differently. The sooner you understand how those things work and the sooner you understand what motivates Vietnamese consumers, the sooner you can actually be successful. Um, walk before you run. Um, I believe very strongly that uh, by say starting something up in just say Ho Chi Minh City and then seeing the evolution of that, and then moving it say to Hanoi and then the evolution of that, um, it, it, it makes it easier to actually uh, control what's going on within the market. Um, needless to say, a, a, not only a sense of patience but a good sense of humor. <laughs> in doses are very important. Um, but I think uh, in terms of entry, if you already have uh, an international brand, understand what brand equity you have within the market before you enter. At least that way you can take the strengths that you have and try and negate the weaknesses that you have. Um, understand where the gaps are in the market and then look at how to fill those gaps. And I always like to use a, a Unilever terminology, and that is we re-engineer products to meet the market. So in other words, instead of just putting your, your brand out there, find out what is required by Vietnamese consumers and see how you can re-engineer your brand to meet that need. I think that's absolutely critical because it will reduce the amount of marketing you have to do, um, and it will increase the desire for the brand. So I think that's absolutely critical. So use the equity that you have, understand what that equity actually means in Vietnam, re-engineer the brand as much as you can to meet the needs, and then localize the communication as much as possible to get your message across. Yeah, and uh, yeah, for me, I mean, adding on to what Raph and Martin has just said, the young people is really aspirational, but they are I mean, they are really also into reality, which means they're aspirational, but they go for, I mean, really affordable. Or if you still want to, I mean, to stick to your, I mean, brand equity global or the, the brands that you've already have, uh, I mean, ever since, then be something that really, really, that, I mean, strongly aspirational for the young people and tap into them when they have more, I mean, purchasing power. Thank you very much, everyone, for being on the show with us today. Thank you. Thank you. You're
As discussed with the panel today, this is the first teenage generation in Vietnam with no reference point from their parents' generation, and which is always striving for the balance in having fun and living up to family values. As such, the panelists have provided some insightful suggestions on Vietnam's market entry strategy that can be a great reference frame for you all. If you have questions for the show or for the panelists, listen on to fayetteinsightvietnam.com.vn for past episodes and show updates. Log on to Insight Vietnam at WordPress, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. We're now halfway through the journey of Inside Vietnam. For me personally, it has been a wonderful journey with all of you as my companions. I have learned a lot about Vietnam myself, and I hope that you do too. Bye for now, and I look forward to being with you again.